Craig Adams here from Wedding Film School, and today I'm going to be doing an inside the edit for Beth and Phil's wedding. So let's just take a look at this seven minute film shot in South Carolina by myself, and uh, let's look at the editing. So the first thing I want to address was the fiasco with the cinemascopes. I know why it happened, because I made this PNG file. Um, it's just, if I click V, it's just a PNG with these two black bars. It's 1080p and it should be 4K because this is a 4K timeline. Um, the sequence is 4K, this should be 4K. So there's actually a single pixel on the top and bottom that shows through. So when you watch the film online, you know, it's not good. So that was one mistake. I should have caught that, but I didn't. The hardest thing for the dad. And I, I, I don't know, this first shot was a little awkward. Like I should have gotten something a little different than that. The hardest but. thing for the dad was not this wedding. This is a great thing. The hardest thing was that day that I drove away from- So the focus the goes in and out a little bit. Say so I had one light on them as like a hair light. It's tough so shooting by yourself. All those life events, I think that was the hardest by far. But so I really only had these two ones, cameras. So let's talk about this audio real quick. You'll notice that it looks a little jacked up. <laughs> That's because it is. Um, this audio, I tell you, I had to do so much to this. Um, I have the loudness on. So if we turn that off, you'll see the loudness goes down. And then I also had background noise removal. And then I had bass boost. So let's just put that flat. And then let's kind of just like put this back to zero. So this is what the audio was like when I first got it. Here, let's just isolate that. Wait, there we go. So that's what I was working with. A little tough. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's gonna put that back. So you can hear, like there's just so much stuff going on with this. Yeah. So I had to do my best to try to fix that. Put that back as well. So I was shooting with the crop marks on the camera. So I knew exactly what my frame would be. Um, and I just, you know, I set my composition for that. As far as the light, you know, it was pretty much shining from my, like behind me onto him. I was trying to get him more isolated than the background, but, and I was still looking for this bokeh because the DJ stuff was right here. Certainly there are many good ones and there will be many more. You'll, You'll notice the audio crossfades. The to my daughter Beth and her husband. And like, there's a big audio change here because he's yelling. So like the audio was much better here than it was here, but. And it was also kind of awkward, like switching to this shot as so well. Made to my daughter Beth and her husband, Phil. And for most of these shots, even though I was, see, there's just like so many problems. Um, even though I was, I had the crop marks, like that's what I shot. And then I just adjusted it. And that's why I like the crop marks because I can make those adjustments. To my daughter and there was no, color correction. I did color correction on these though. So that's what it looked like. And it was just a little dark. Um, so I raised these up and I just did that for the My reaction just to try to match. Best wishes. The greatest proof of God in my mind. So I brought back the ceremony dialogue. Is simple. And you'll notice the crossfades that go up and not what's, it starts with this. I think this helps for dialogue, stuff like this to help with the transition. God in my mind as I get older. I actually did a small pull out with the keyframe. You can kind of tell now that I go back and forth here, just a little keyframe move. Mind as I get older. Scale. Is simply the word love. Love has to become to me the greatest proof. It's something that we all need. All right, I think I did some, no, I didn't do anything to this shot. I should have, totally should have. 
Yeah, I didn't do all anything. Me. So these three clips are all part of the same section of the ceremony and actually pulled them apart just so that I could get these spaces in between just so that I could time it up with the music. And, love and it's also good when it's like a little slower pace. Love is the most powerful thing in the world. Okay, so just like most of my films, this first minute is like a little mini film of its own. Uh, you'll notice that with a lot of my films, like I'll start with some dialogue, some kind of theme, this section where he talks about, where the father talks about uh, love. It's like the theme idea of the, I show kind of who's talking, where they are, what's going on, and then I kind of isolate the couple just so that people know, you know, it's them. So we know, you know, the fathers, where, and then who the couple are. And, uh, once, as soon as I look for that tone, the change in the song, and then we're going to completely switch gears, go back to the beginning of the day. I actually shot this and this and this the day after the wedding. So the day the weather looked kind of similar, similar enough. Um, so I had like a really weird profile going on. Uh, with the drone when I shot it. So it was like really yellow and I shot flat, but the saturation is still baked in. So I had to do a lot of work. Um, the first being uh, a balance. So I just let uh, Final Cut kind of figure it out, do what they wanted to do. Then from there, I matched it to um, get rid of the yellows a little bit to match the shot back here. Um, but I did that after I uh, added this um, color finale LUT, which I added to these because I just wanted the feeling to be like this. Like I brought back a lot of saturation and uh, a little bit of that Kodak LUT. Uh, just to peek inside here real quick, just the color wheels up to saturation. I, I don't think I did anything. I did a little bit with the gamma here. No. And then I just a little 30% of, um, I believe, Kodak log. Yeah. So that just gave me a little bit of color, a little bit of gamma. And uh, because I did that to these two clips, I brought the saturation up real quick, you know, a lot. Um, I had to change this. Uh, so I added that and then balanced it with the clip next to it. So that's how I got that drone shot. This is with the Phantom 3 Pro. So I didn't really like that I showed uh, her twice, this Abby. I had like one or two reactions of other people, but these were just the best that fit. I, I, this is like a weird shot, but uh, it, you know, it's different. We're in Brooklyn in my apartment. And I love this Brooklyn. shot. This is my favorite shot of him I, I got. Like just the color and just like the motion is like really great. And we're catching up and we're about to go pick up. So once again, I did so much work with the audio here. Um, the usual suspects, background noise removal, and then I raised the to 12 dB. Um, and then I actually had, so let's just isolate these real quick. His girlfriend, Beth, from the airport. So this is with the zoom plugged in. I made up my mind. I know. That's straight from the DJ. And then this was from my camera, I believe. So I thought that with both of these added, it kind of gave a little bit of a fuller sound because what I got from the DJ is just super treble high, high end. And then what I got from my mic on the camera is low end. So tried to mix those the best honestly this was some of the toughest audio i've ever had to mix and uh if we just get rid of these for a minute you'll see that and we're catching up and we're about to go pick up his girlfriend beth from the airport and he looks at me i was go, making a move so i tried to hide it and i probably could have cut right there but i think i didn't for a reason and he looks at me and goes Nah, it just fit right for the film. 
So I probably should have gotten rid of that that move. Yeah. I'm gonna move to Greenville. We're gonna start a family. We're gonna build a community, and I'm gonna chase my. So you'll notice the audio dips whenever I have dialogue. For most of every single time I have dialogue, I will dip it. For this part of the song, it was really, really quiet, so the audio here worked. And I'm really trying to get this dialogue up to close to zero as possible without peaking. And it looks like this is, but it's like a weird thing with Final Cut. If you like really do a lot of work to like the trebles and what, like, looks like it's peaking, but it's not just because it's really fucked up audio bit. Paradise. I was like, dude, I've never made a decision like that. I put a lot of headroom and like it's very sidey for this angle, but I really didn't want to show the the DJ stuff that was over here. In my life. Um, did I do anything to this? No, this is straight out of camera. So the picture profile I used, not really a big fan. I want to do less work in post. It's just like it does weird things with the yellows. Dirty window. You see, this is a weird mix of tungsten inside, but then daylight outside. You can see the light, you know. So, like in this situation, you just gotta, especially with skin tones, you just have to expose for daylight if there's a mix, and then just have the the tungsten really orangey in the background. And people gave me shit for this. The, I'm doing a, a rack pull. Um, maybe I could have slipped this a little bit more so that I ha I land on focus a little bit more, but still. Yeah, I rack straight to it. It's not a mess up, I'm just rack focusing. I believe this is reversed. Let's command R. Yeah. Is it? I think it is. Actually, no, it's not reversed. Nope. The timing's off a little bit there, but it, it still works. You really have to match each change in the song to a moment so I brought down because this was the end of the song here I believe yeah and then I re brought in another section of the song just to make it longer because I like to put dialogue under these quiet sections so this was a perfect moment for like a long extended uh, section and you can see all the audio cross f f cross fades just to try to normalize the audio so that it all sounds the same volume. Just fiction. It's super I important. About for like, since the fall Don't want it to hit zero. And now it's actually here. And my focus was getting going in and out just because like I wasn't expecting to do that and I also hated hated this. So I was battling that the whole time. And now it's actually here and that just kind of blows my mind because they never really. I probably should have started with the close-up and then go to the end. So it would have been better if I, um, yeah, started with the dress down and then and pulled out. Kind of blows my mind because they never really. White balance isn't very good for these shots. Day. It was just a number, and now it's actually a day, and it's two day. Good. So there was like some audio right here, so I had to pull out real quick right there really match the music points, you know? I actually didn't have the Zoom H1 on him, so I had no audio for this. I didn't see it coming. Just like monopod, tripod, slider, slider, 100 macro. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate today. The marriage of I was like struggling with the focus here, so I was just on a 55 the whole time here. The marriage of I also had this shot that I was auditioning. I shot this, but I just couldn't find a place for it. 
especially if I already had the ring shot, there's no reason to show the same thing twice. The marriage of Elizabeth Doring and Philip Exeter. I love me some standing shots. They're so happy to have you all here from all the different directions. The reaction shots are super important. The different people and the family and the friends. And so that audio matches up. What a, what a great friend and... I just like to get through ceremonies real quick. So this looks pretty quiet to me, actually. Family member these two are. Yeah, it's barely hitting negative six. I should have brought that up to there. What a great friend and family member these two are. To it's have much better. Such a crowd here. It's wonderful, and we're very. So this slider audio doesn't match with his his lips. Wonderful. And we're very happy to celebrate this day with them. Kind of didn't fit, but I just needed something there. The reaction shots are good. I didn't have that many good reaction shots from other people, and especially because I was shooting by myself, I did not have much time to get the reaction shots. By the power vested in me by God. So this was with the 7200, and you can see the light spill is such a thing with the adapter on the Sony E, e mount God, to EF. So I was up there with a monopod ready to capture this, no matter what. I just needed this. Boom. I now you know, clapping, you clapping Mr. them. And Mrs. Philip Arthur Good. See, I just get through the ceremony real quick, real quick. So we had a lot of crossfades there just to manage the volumes of the audio here. And then just fade right out. When you fade out into another song, I've always found that uh, if you do... Where is it? Linear. Oh, no, I didn't. Huh. Oh well. Fading out completely with the audio, like during the song as the new, uh, from the, the audio of the clip that you're showing as you bring in the new song, it usually works. So it's like clapping, pull it down all the way, so it's like muted. Cool. Okay. Tone, tone shift, four minutes. Uh, gonna get faster, more fun. We have lyrics for the first time. So I believe I did a bunch of, so this is the photographer, you know, sometimes it happens, I don't really mind. So I did a tiny little, seems up the contrast, up the saturation a little bit, that's really all it seems to be. Ducks, yes. So yeah, I just brought the saturation and contrast up a tiny bit for all of these, because they were pretty close. Just, you know, pull the audio up every so often. Just kind of switch it up a little bit. Go to double cup dub, as always. As always. So this is 120 frames per second in 1080p. So I scaled it up to 4K for the film just because I exported in 4K. Can't really tell though, it still looks good. So this shot works really well because of the waterfall in the background. You can like instantly tell that it is slow motion. Because like sometimes when you see people moving, you almost can't tell if they're faking going slow. You want something that definitely proves it to your brain, like initially, that it is slow motion. Just all the different cuts. It took me like 10 seconds to get these. I love this thing that falls. Yep. Stuff like that. If I had like more, like during fall, like shh, it'd be cool to get like leaves coming down. It'd be so cool. Especially if there's light in the background, like dust. Oh. <laughs> Just like action reaction. A little bit of a shake. So for this shot, I did a huge translation. So it was like this. wasn't tall enough. you know you just bring it up that's the beauty of the crop marks so for these more fun shots you know I bring in the and just do all the audio crossfades as many as possible just showing like the groomsmen and I put my voice in the films I don't care I do that all the time So 
So I should have done translation on this. I should have pulled this over to like that. Hold on. It's a 4K timeline. Give it a sec. Together we can do anything. That would have been much better than what I had. We can do anything. Yep, I should have done that. Um, yeah. Okay, so, you know, big shift. You just gotta know when the pace changes in your songs and use that to your advantage. 16 millimeter on a tripod slider. So I lit this from the side, uh, from this side over. Slider, 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 slider. I know, I know, I know, a lot of slider. So I'd like put my camera way up high to get that. Once again, pull down the audio. I had the Dito up over here shining this way. This is my safety cam, I just like set this wide. Then moved around with the monopod. So this is what I was, you know, this is a little sidey for my liking. Like I would have liked, you know, to see a little more of the front of her rather than the side of her, but I wanted this and I wanted the light to expose on her and then the background to be a little darker. So I got that. In you know. high school, obviously. And then one day I find out she wants to be an engineer. <laughs> So I was way too tight on this lens. This was like a fiasco when this, cause I knew the dancing was happening, but I should have just known, you know, like put a tight react on the reaction for the bride and groom and then just like go around handheld with like the 1635. I had to switch lenses halfway through and it wasn't good. Of and that like corded mic too, you know, it's just like of what a truly complete couple looks like. I asked them to redo their clink, so that's like a redo. These people were asking for a photo. <laughs> I told them video and they went crazy. Just like mute all this, you know. I'm just looking for a diverse set of shots here. And obviously we have a tone shift, so I mark these in the song and I know that I can switch to something different than what I'm showing. Yep, slow it down, it's good. So I did a bit of color here, uh, very similar to what I had in the beginning. So I did a little bit more. So let's just take a look at that. So the LUT was once again, that same LUT, the codec log at 30%. I did a little bit of a color shift towards orange in the mids. And then I believe I read, nope, that's it. Nothing else. You know, so that helped a lot. I think like it brought back the color to their skin, the saturation, it's good. And like there was no sun. I don't know why we were doing this photo session when the sun was just about to show. Like there were gaps in the clouds. Like you can kind of see it here. Like the sun was gonna come out, like wait, wait a tiny bit. Like 10 minutes later would've been better. I posed them for this. I just wanted the mountains in the background. This is 120 frames per second. And because it was so dark, it was a little rough. So I did black and white this. Just cause it looked a little, it would have been okay, but I just think it was cool having the black and white. And you can see the huge difference between the 4K and the 1080p here. You know, this is crisp, crisp. So it's actually 
going back so there's two keyframes here there's the the fate the opacity up and down and then i'm also you can see it now like i slowly pull the text back yep and that's it so i've got a lot more bts showing the entire day of shooting um so make sure to check that out but thank you so much for this and if it if you've reached this moment give it a like give it a thumbs up uh, support the channel as much as you can. Uh, thank you so much. See you.